Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Monkey Bubble EU Invitational. To the best of my knowledge, this is the second one of these we've run, so you will be seeing some familiar faces uh, from within the EU scene. And speaking of familiar faces, I am, of course, Big Hungry Phil, and with me on the other casting slot today is Yokai. Yokai, how is it going? It's going pretty good. Obviously, a change of environment from the last tournament, but same old Yokai, same old Phil, and <laughs> same old... Nothing changes. I was going to say same old Overwatch, actually, but it's a very different game now, Ooh. of course. Ooh, uh... Yeah, this is... Because uh, the, the last time this happened, we were deep into the GOATS meta, and now, of course, that is a thing of the past. Um, so we're deep into 2-2-2, two, 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 which is, of course, the rule set we'll be playing with today, because that's what our teams are now used to playing with. And we've got three games coming up for you tonight. We're going to be starting off by seeing 4th Dimension versus Banshee Esports. Now, Yokai, can you tell us a little bit about either of these teams? Well, of course, Fourth Dimension uh, has been somewhat of a, not even a staple, but over this offseason, they've been a team that's been one of the main features in terms of social media presence. Of mm. course, we haven't had a, a recent Open Division season to judge them with. <laughs> and but, will not for a while. Yeah, we have the practice season, but uh, we'll we'll move swiftly on from the controversy of that. But mm. you see... Uh, sprays, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you see names such as Jaru. Uh, you see Fees Dog, of course, uh, recently uh, competing in Bolong. Uh, and also some familiar names such as Doggo and Kumo as well. So, uh, you know, a lot of familiar faces on the side of Fourth Dimension. Uh, Banshee Esports as well. Less, uh, at least for me, uh, I know a little bit less about these guys. Not mm. many uh, familiar names. But of course, we have uh, JPK on the hitscan roll and uh, Invin as well in there. So, you know, a, a few names that have been thrown around the scene for a little while that you may want to know as well. Mm. Uh, but the big important thing is that this is going to probably have been the first major test these teams will actually have had since Open Division a few months back. And of course, it was quite a while since the last Open Division. We've, of course, had trials and contenders and then a little bit of downtime uh, since EU contenders even finished. I think, what, are we a, are we a month out from the finals? Yeah. Yeah, it has, it's been a long time. So... Uh, hopefully these guys have been finding time to play a lot on the ladder, maybe do a bit of screaming here and there so they're not coming into this uh, completely blind. And uh, of course, these aren't the only teams that are playing today. We're actually partnered with uh, Caster's Nest and Nordskin, who will be covering some of the other games today. So that those will be cast, uh, obviously, not in English because those uh, organizations are not an English language broadcast. But if you look uh, at the schedule and the panels below, you will be able to see where you can find links to some of these games. Uh, so yeah, a lot of of other teams um playing today some of some of them very familiar i have a team in particular that i'm looking forward to <laughs> hopefully getting a chance to cast um clockwork vendetta not known as throwers necessarily uh but maybe maybe they'll do it just to spite me maybe they'll throw their first round game they're going up against uh nairiki esports who very kindly stepped in somewhat at the last minute to take up a slot in this tournament and whilst we are babbling on about clockwork vendetta worth noting monkey bubble has partnered with clockwork vendetta so those of you that were uh, thirsty for that clockwork vendetta merch in order to support those guys to help them get some tuna in their diet if you visit the monkey bubble store you can find all of that beautiful clockwork vendetta merch so yeah go and uh, go and show your support guys i've already i've already splashed out and bought myself a hat and a t-shirt i'm just looking forward to them getting in here yeah, and but you did mention as well, Cogman, that are not necessarily known as throwers, but they do have some of a history of maybe taking an NYXL uh, <laughs> card and sandbagging in some of their easier matches. So fingers crossed, they uh, they you know they come all out. They they come out in a meta which you know, although you may think at first bunker is you know very common. You have the Arissa, you have a lot of the more close range DPS players, but you also have the Sigma, which when mm. you think about Moose, his signature hero is more of the Roadhog. We saw a little bit of his diva in the World Cup, but uh, or in the World Cup trials, should I say? But still, how I feel like matchups with Clockwork are going to be dependent on how well Moose can really adapt to this role. Which you know, considering for a lot of contenders, he was considered a one trick. Uh, well, I, I I don't want to spend too much time talking about C yeah. CV, and that this is my fault for bringing it up. But I, I I'm known as a bit of a fanboy, so apologies already. But before they were Clockwork Vendetta, they were No You OTP, which is no you one trick um so yeah the fact that they now have to branch out and adapt is is going to be interesting to see how they actually manage that so moving back to talk about the teams that we are hopefully minutes away from actually getting to see in game i can speak to a little bit of what we've seen from some of these players uh, i've got a bit of experience watching fees dog watching jaru uh 
play uh, because they were playing for the um, Arena Clash side of the Spartans in the most recent uh, round of Arena Clash. And Fees Dog, really very quite a talented hit scan player, uh, Widowmaker, Tracer, McCree. And now that the meta has shifted a little bit in favor of some of the DPS heroes, maybe not so much for the hit scan heroes, we can hopefully get to a point where Fees Dog is in a position to demonstrate some of those skills for us. Yeah, and I, I actually got a chance to speak with Fees Dog at Insomnia just a few weeks back, and uh, and he I, he was saying that you know previous metas haven't really favored his hero pool too well. You know, Zarya not not traditionally a DPS hero, uh, and even when it came to uh, you know the previous meta where it was Reaper and May, it didn't quite favor him so much. Sure. But he he mentioned a lot of uh, you know the more recent heroes you have to play, where the McCree comes into the picture, definitely more favoring of him, especially mm -hmm. considering just how talented he can be when it's his pool. I still think it's a really rough meta to be a hit scan hero in because you've got to be able to get the angles in to get around all of this shielding that we're seeing absolutely everywhere between the Orisa and the Sigma. There's so much space control in those shields. It can be very difficult to actually find purchase. But we are now coming into the game. And speaking of Fees Dog on the hit scan roll, see him coming out on the McCree here, HM on the Farah for the side of fourth dimension. It's just like what you said about there, not really being too much of that uh, Hiskan roll in terms of the shields, because you have the double yeah, shields. Yeah, huge! Oh. Wow, talking about Fees Dog not being able to find that angle. Fees Dog able to find it huge there, and that Res appears not to have come off, and in the meantime, Hota able to get a kill as well, now getting up close and personal with the enemy. Arissa, there's the kill. A lot of damage coming out already, sends Dyer down, and the Rock connected a big way with Invin, sending them down. That is going to be looking like a very early point capture for Fourth Dimension. And it was straight away, once you get that far out of the sky, you can really focus down that Doomfist. Uh, and that was great with Feast again. Oh, huge drop slow straight away. But that hiss gun, it gives you that advantage, that ability to isolate the far out, which, you know, when you run the far Doomfist, HM is currently uncontested almost, aside from huge on that, on his opposing number. Well, oh, abs absolutely, it puts a lot of um, a lot of pressure onto huge because they're taking pressure both from the Farajul and from Feastock on the low ground. Freeze deck getting very close to the ultimate already. JPK looking like they're struggling to find any value there, but Narrow with a big rock, he's gonna find Kumo. HM able to get the opposite number of Huge, and now Feast Dog being chased down, followed into the grave by Naru, getting a double there with Doggo going down as well, finding Jaru. Uh, this is the thing, if you can support your Sigma to get some of this stuff done, the amount of damage he can put out, the ability to survive is massive, and you can just come in and walk through an enemy team like that. That was an incredible rock onto Kumo as well, basically isolating him, giving him no chance of escape there. One thing I'm surprised we haven't seen with JPK and Dai yet though, is that pull punch is almost a guaranteed pick if you can get it, and a very common combo. But coming into this fight, we have the Deadeye, and we have that Coalescence for Doggo, so I'm probably going to look to put a lot of pressure on Huge, as well as just supporting the aggression that his team's going to be bringing. Yeah, the big part of this is going to be if anyone can shut down either of these Coalescences, but that is now dueling oh. Coalescences. HM looking for an angle, but Huge gets the opener onto Fees Dog. HM needs a big equalizer here if they want to take this fight. Opting not to invest that barrage just yet, has managed to get a couple of rockets on to Huge, but not enough to get a kill. Oh. HM coming in low, narrow, able to get the Hota here. And it feels like HM may have held onto this barrage for way too long because this fight has been long and drawn out. And we are going to see Banshee start to <laughs> equalize, although HM finding Huge there as well. Still not that many left alive for fourth dimension, and Huge getting rezzed back up by Crow. HM still looking for an angle for this barrage. But this is a team fight that maybe should have been over a while ago. Oh, HM! Whoa! Whoa! With the concussive blast, gets two. Didn't need the barrage. Atoll is going to use that anyway. Hasn't quite used it to secure the kill, but Hota with the follow up there to take Crew Crow out of the fight. And yeah, wow, all on the back of one very, very good concussive blast from HM. Once that main tank's out the picture, you cannot hold on to that space at all. He does uh, use that barrage at the end, though. Maybe a bit of a question ultimate, but they do still have the uh, the flux as well uh, online for Hoda. So a good chance for crowd control. Maybe a uh, combination with the coalescence, which is back online as well. Yeah, in fact, both of the uh, Moira's here have managed to get this very quickly, oh. but Huge is going to get that opener. Of course, going uh, Farah against Farah Mercy is not an even matchup. We have seen the point flip back over. Meteor Strike is going to take Doggo out of the picture. Jaru takes a dive. Hota down now as well. Kumo down into the pit. 
Nara is going to get the kill credit for that one. We are about to hit parity at 80 to 80 for these two teams on this first point of Illyos. That is, that is disastrous for Fourth Dimension, though. They use both support elements, and they have pretty much nothing to push in with aside from that flux. So it's going to be looking for a big one here from Hoda, maybe even a combo with Feast Dog. Oh, yeah, but this, is a, this is a spicy combo, isn't it? With the Gravitic Flux <laughs> and, of course, with that High Noon. It can be tricky to pull off because, of course, Feast Dog will be very vulnerable whilst that's happening. But it could do a lot. Whoa! Hota! HM! One and two a piece. Feast Dog goes down. Huge takes themselves out of the fight. Dyer brings this back up into parity. Jaru now on the Arissa. Able to find JPK. Dyer going down as well. Looking like we are going to see Fourth Dimension flip this back over. But this is potentially one tight one fight territory for both teams now. This last fight is where this is all going to be decided. Invin swapped over to Lucio just to touch here, and they only have the Barrage and the Valkyrie to recontest this to fight into Feast Dog's uh, High Noon there. So it's going to be a very tough fight, but if Fusion get in position, this could be a very, very good fight for them to take. Okay, well, that's the overtime wick ticked over. Feast Dog now with the zoning just to try and keep people off the point. Doesn't get a kill out of it. Looks like we may have had some information there from that Moira Orb that there was, in fact, a Doomfist hiding round the back. You can now see the Doomfist. Manages to duck and roll out of the way. Gets the flash. Gets the kill onto JPK. Naru now with the Gravitic Flux. No kills out of that yet. Crow being a huge back into the fight. Naru desperate looking for a kill, but Dogger with the Coalescence takes him out of the fight. Huge once more. Getting the better of HM and a barrage out from Huge. Isn't going to find enough as Hota gets the double, gets the main tank, gets the triple with Crow going down as well. A lot of work done for the Sigma on the side of Fourth Dimension to secure that first point. And I will say that I can speak from experience that I have a feeling that Doggo will probably have been calling so heavily at the end there. Mm. He has a, a knack for just knowing exactly how much he needs to say in fights, and especially in those tight last fight territories, he can really become a vocal player. But the, the it just seemed like the target focus on the in general team play was so much more on point with fourth dimension despite it being so close uh, and that McCree also did definitely come in to pay dividends especially at the end there when you got the pick on JPK and and so much work done with that high noon it was almost very good just for keeping the presence off the point but the ability to keep people back with the ultimate rather than just playing for kills is something that we maybe don't see that much on the ladder and it's really quite refreshing to see it in this level of play but interesting here feast dog moving away from his comfortable hit scan role is going to be playing the doom fist here and this is going to be where he can make a name for himself he said he's not known for a lot of these heroes but he wants a chance to prove it and he this is going to be a great stage to do it but they the red team was straight in here though that's a really aggressive uh, rotation coming in from Banshee. They don't want to give up too much space if they can help it. HM is going to get the opening blow trades back and forth now, but that is two now online in terms of kills for um, for Fourth Dimension, and they are going to clear this up. JPK is looking for some of those kills and is going to go for that hard reset. The final kill there onto Huge, and uh, neither team coming out of that with a huge amount of ult charge, so still roughly parity there for these teams. Well, Feast Dog is very close to that Meteor Strike. Uh, you know, one or two big slams could easily uh, land that ultimate for him. But what we saw there is just far as a very good defensive hero. And now that it's set up, uh, especially, they can really start to rain those rockets in. Look at him, only 84% of that barrage. Mm. Feast are going to go in as well Ooh, here. Well, Dyer down very early in the fight. Crow is still up. Looks like they may have the res online, but with Huge down as well. That's going to be a fight that you really don't want too much more of if you can help it as Feast Dog manager to get JPK will have the ultimate ready to go for this next fight. And because there have been hero swaps out from Banshee Esports, they are down in a pit in terms of ult charge for this next fight. <laughs> oh, Donnelly dying there. But, as you say, they now are at a massive ultimate disadvantage, and it's very, very close to a six-pack here. Uh, HM has looked solid on this far as well, really having a good time with these chokes he can fire into. And he has a oh. load of... Oh, oh. Round the oh. back with oh. a barrage! The shield went too far! Just fine, JPK, but HM taken out by Huge. Round the back. That is not an ult that was survived, and with the res coming off as well, this is now going to be fourth dimension in a bit of a pit. HM brought back into the fight. The Meteor Strike finds nothing but the follow-up from Feast Dog. Doggo with the Coalescence, able to get one more HM finding Huge as well. That is going to be another team fight going in the direction of fourth dimension. What we did see there though is uh, HM might be getting a bit too big for his boots, you know, it, it, that is a vulnerable, uh, a vulnerability of that ultimate, you know, you're, you're very vulnerable, you're very stationary. But, it's a very loud suicide button. Yeah, basically, but 
they do have this uh, Gravitic Flux at this choke point as well, so keep an eye on Hutter in this fight, and they're going to use a bongo straight away. Beast Dog with an early pick, JPK going down, all that extra damage coming in from the Arista Supercharge. It means Feast Dog is going to get a double and start getting closer and closer to another one of those. That's our third for Feast Dog, the man on tear here. He's not trapped in uh, Hit Scan Jail anymore, proving he can play the Doomfist when he needs to. What was it? I said at the start of the round, Phil? He has made a name for himself in this fight. JPK, though, is going to find Jar here, so they could well pull us back. Yeah, big rock onto HM. No follow-up damage, and Doggo getting one onto Crow as well. Feast Dog looking to find the kill onto the Farrah on the ground. Is going to secure it as well. 99-0 to zero with one punch to clear the point. Is that going to be enough to knock them right the way out? No, we got a touch. We got a touch at the end there. The Arisa looking for a bunker on the point. Not quite able to do it. Hota falling very low, taking a huge amount of damage. Has to back out of the way of Invin's Coalescence. Gets a big rock on the enemy Sigma HM with the follow-up Feast Dog down. Main tank down now, and this is an incredibly tradey fight. Look at that kill feed back and forth, but it's not going to be enough. That is going to be 2 and 0. Oh, fourth dimension going to be taking Ilios. And as much as the first point was very, very close, 99 to 99, very, very tight final fight, mm. second point there on Ruins was much more one-sided, and fourth dimension really pulled it together, especially when they pulled out the Doomfist, which... When you look at Fizog, as we said, not really known for that Doomfist, so he's clearly and <laughs> cinder up so, myself. Somebody has had to adapt to the meta here. Oh, yeah. Look at that barrage, just um, celebratory fireworks almost. Did a bit of damage onto the most at the end, but may maybe not the most impactful of ultimates there. But yeah, as, as we were saying, Fizog has ha done a great job there pulling out, you know, what seemed to be uh, a bit of a... Maybe, well, the opposite of a comfort pick, more of a flex pick, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a necessary pick. Mm, a, a more meta-driven pick, but regardless, he, he had a great showing on it. He got a lot of those early picks, which we mentioned, and that really opened the way for Fourth Dimension to turn, you know, turn it from such a tight map to just absolutely almost stomping on the second point. <laughs> and as soon as HM was set up with all that space he had for free due to being the defending side, it was basically, uh, it seemed like at that point, uh, Banshee just didn't have an answer for all that incoming damage. It makes me wonder almost if Banshee Esports have looked at the line for fourth dimension and gone, okay, we know Fees Dog, we know Doggo, we know Jarrah, we know what their hero pools are, so we can afford to run these characters and this character in this situation. To suddenly see uh, a play like Fees Dog flex onto something that is unexpected, given what you know about their history as a player, is likely to rumble a lot of the plans that you had lined up. And I think Banshee were maybe a little bit slow to adapt on that second map. So they did eventually bring out a Doomfist of their own. But again, you're so deep in that hole of ultimate charge that it can be very hard to bring it back to parity. And that uh, that mid-map uh, ad adapt bleh, adapting Adap as you... Uh, adaptation, thank you. As you mentioned, is going to be even more uh, important here uh, as we are going to Blizzard World, which, you know, has three very different points. The first point being, you know, not so open, but it also doesn't really favor the close range heroes so much, so you can kind of play a bit of both. But then second point, wide open, great for snipers. And third point, very tight, very packed. Uh, so for heroes like Reaper and Doomfist, where, you know, they work very well when they're up in your face, really uh, more shotgun-like heroes, so Reaper literally having shotguns uh, <laughs> in his hands. So, you know, it, that's going to basically determine whether or not Banshee can turn this around, and, you know, yeah, they're going to have to really show that they can. I think you're quite right you're okay with that. And it, it's it's maps like this that sort of force that reconsideration of what we can expect or what is the most optimum pick that you have this point where you've got to make a decision between do we keep running what we've got because we're 80% of the way to an ultimate or do we automatically swap to what we know is the best pick here or do we just wait until we maybe get rolled off this particular hero and then make the meta swap? Yeah, and it it depend I would always say with something like that, it does depend on how, A, how far you are to the ultimate. If you're like 80%, you know, you may well get a lot of value, but also is it actually viable to do so? Because, you know, it could be such an unfavorable matchup. But here we see uh, Fort Dimension on the defense running uh, the favored comp of this meta, the mm -hmm. Doomfist Reaper. And uh, Huge can come out on the far again, so uh, looking to give this another try. Uh, and it, it, it worked fairly well on uh, on Well, so we'll have to see how, uh, how that's going to turn out. It did, of course. And Fourth Dimension now having that additional dimension of the height to deal with in the form of the fire. They don't really have anybody that is a direct counter. You can, if you're a very good Doomfizz, get up there and start to do some damage, but you maybe don't have the geometry on this point to make that work. And now, with a bunch of angles controlled by the height and by the incoming remainder of Banshee Esports, this is where it's going to be a little bit tricky 
for fourth dimension to start making this work. But oh. Feast Dog is going to get the opening kill of this match. And we're seeing Doggo now on duty here trying to deal with the Farah. HM managing to find Dire here as well. And now this is going to be fourth dimension just looking to push as far and get as much ult charge as they can at the back end of that fight. Yeah, and what we see there is, you mentioned there was no direct counter, so instead, rather than even paying any attention to Huge, they just try and win the ground fight. It's a 4v6 if you ignore that Farah, so... Yeah, Farah? What yeah. Farah? Well, there's no Farah yeah. here. You know, it's, the Farah is all well and good, but if there's no team to back it up and earn it any space, there's no use for it, so... Well, the one thing that they did get in that push was they did get Huge's Barrage here. They don't have a stern, they don't have a hook, they don't have a sleep to knock out that Barrage, so their aim needs to be pixel perfect, or Hota needs to be so good with the shield here. But Huge has got the opener, JPK finds Kuma as well. There's the Barrage, just for good measure. A lot of that was absorbed by the Sigma. HM able to get a Death Blossom off Hota, finally getting Huge down, but it is three on the point now with... Oh, and another person brought back in, that's Indin back in. In the fight for Banshee, this is not great numbers now for Fourth Dimension. This is the second team fight and already looking to be down here, but Feast Dog able to get an opener. JPK down, will have his ultimate here. Going to be looking for a pick. A beautiful combo <laughs> in with the halt from Jaru secures the kill onto Dyer. And it was looking Dyer for Fourth Dimension there, but they brought that right the way back into their territory. And they didn't even give up a tick. That was a beautiful stall coming out there. JPK does now have that Meteor Strike, but Kumo now has the beat, Jaro has that Supercharger, and Hoda has that also impactful uh, flux there. So, uh, although, on the other side, they do also have Dia with that Supercharger as well, so uh, maybe to spot Huge, and actually mm. speaking of Huge... Of course, and they're lacking the mercy to bring Doggo back into the fight. It is slightly more mobile than some of the other heroes. They're going to try and make up for that with the Supercharger and the Sound Barrier, but that's both Superchargers down already. HM has to get out of trouble. And there's the... Oh! oh! The size of that Meteor Strike! With the pull there from Dyer, knocks four out. JPK pretty much guaranteeing themselves play of the game with that one ultimate. Absolutely massive play. Doomfist comboing with the pulls is always a great way to get a highlight, to get those opening picks, and JPK utilizing it perfectly uh, alongside Dyer, showing some great coordination. But they're keeping pushing, they're keeping this space forward. This is exactly what you want to be doing, especially when time is not really on your side after getting held on first for so long. Uh, especially also when just a rock out from the heavens manages to find <laughs> Feast Dog and knock them out of the fight as well. Huge has the damage boost and has the barrage, can do so much to just bottle up fourth dimension in this space and just buy all that free progress on the payload. Look at how far, it's almost halfway through that big rock out from Narrow once again. Beautiful predict will get the knockdown as well. HM finds Crow. Is this the open that the fourth dimension need? Because they will have the coalescence here. They can push with that as a bit of a battery. And they are now pushing right back in. Look how far Banshee Esports have had to back out on the back of just losing that one hero. And actually, look at what we've seen straight away from Feast Dog. You move on to a more open point. He immediately swaps to the McCree and it's causing huge, a huge amount of problems. Excuse the pun. It's, but it's he kind does of hard not to make that pun, isn't it? It is, it is. He does have the barrage zone, he's going to be lucky to get behind them. There's but the Flux, manages to get a few in there. There's the slam of the follow-up. Barrage coming out from Huge as well. Not a combo we're used to seeing there, but you've got to admire the impact it had because that is going to be, or oh, Jaru caught out on his own. Alt battery at the back end of the team fight. We might get a recontest here, but honestly, it's going to be very difficult for 4th Dimension to get back in on this. You do see zero ultimates on the side of 4th Dimension as well, and they have a supercharger as well. JPK just going to push them straight to the door, get a little bit of extra ult charge, dropping very low in the process, but not really any trouble there, and they are going to take second point fairly easily. So you see the Feast Dog has swapped over. We talked about the Seas Dog. Well, well, okay, let's not talk about that because that was a big old rock to the dome. Huge down, brought back into the fight. Nobody throwing in the towel just yet. Nothing out of Feast Dog's ultimate. A lot of that was absorbed by Naru with the kinetic grasp. Feast Dog taken down. Wow, didn't even need that uh, Meteor Strike at the end, but JP Gagum was bouncing back in and knocks Kumo for six, right back into spawn. And for a team that looked pretty strongly held on the first point, they are just rocketing through the rest of this map. Yeah, but what we should see there is why you don't really favor the McCree in a lot of scenarios. They had no real Ooh, pressure, well, although... That'll do Never it. mind, never mind. Yeah. Crow, of course, always with a res back on. I feel like that must have been just, just back on. <laughs> no, no huge. 
I said die. Well, that's going to be two now. Doggo managing to get JPK. Crow gets abandoned. And the rest of Banshee Esports go for that tactical reset, jumping into the pit. Two minutes, 11 seconds left on the clock. And honestly, they've been looking pretty good on this setup. So maybe they can push this in with a pretty good time bank. Oh, huge played with my heart a little bit there. Bringing out the Genji, but swapping over to oh. the Doomfist. But just those uh, freeze dogs straight away, showing off exactly why uh, why you do run the McCree. Uh, but now swapped over the Reapers, there's no real aerial threat, and this is a much better point for that sort of pick. Wait, so, you've, got to, you've got to assume that somebody on the team was watching the hero picks whilst they were in spawn and went, okay, we're mm. close to spawn, go back and change, go back and change. Well, that's going to be the Coalescence out from Doggo already. Doesn't get a huge amount of value, and we've got the beat out from Kumo as well, and the Meteor Strike out of Egg Gem, not able to find anything either. Because of the sound barrier, there's not been a huge amount gained from any of those ultimates. Nice halt back in, but not quite good enough for Feast Dog to secure the kill on the halted target, and that's going to be Hota down, HM down now, Naru doing a lot of work. Feast Dog wanting to get back in, but booped right back up onto the ledge. And so much of the damage mitigated by the Kinetic Grasp. And uh, this is looking pretty bad for Fourth Dimension. That's going to be the Gravitic Flux out. Hota wants to get back in and get contesting if they can, but it is kills left, right, and center for Banshee Esports. And just under a minute on the time bank. One thing that is, uh, you know, less of a, more of an upside to uh, Fourth Dimension, you know, getting that slight bit of time under a minute does mean that if they, as long as this they This tournament was sponsored by Insights, a platform for gamers to learn and teach at the uh, comfort of their own PC. Get your account it. today. Such a strong first point hold. Uh, and that also, of course, you know, Feastog may be struggling on that Reaper a little bit more. Was very comfortable on the Doomfist, not necessarily on the Reaper there, but... Uh, Banshee Esports came out there, some fantastic synergy between Dyer and Huge, and Dyer and JPK, and just in general, Dyer and the rest of his team. We saw some pull rocks, pull punches, we saw that massive Meteor Strike coming out from JPK as well, combining with the pull, and in general, uh, you know, what looked like, you know, quite a dominant map one, in the end has, you know, really turned around here. They've really flipped it on its head and, you know, made the... Uh, Made fourth dimension the the attackers, the ones that are going to have to retake this uh, this map. Well, you know, Yokai, it's it's sort of weird looking at how this map has has rolled out. When you look at what happened on Ilios, when the initial map was very very close, and then the second map was was pretty much a one sided stomp on the half of fourth dimension. To see Banshee bounce back and really, really put the heat to fourth dimension here. It makes me think that maybe we were a little bit too quick to call them uh, stomped on that second map of videos. It might have just been an unfortunate map pick for them for the particular hero pool that they've got. But I am very keen to see if they can make this setup work for them on defense because it took them a little while to get traction with it on the offense. So it's going to be Naru starting with a rock. It looks like it hasn't connected with anybody. And uh, we've got pretty much the mirror matchup here. It's just uh, Invin and Doggo with the variants here. I will say, I personally think that Huge is going to have an advantage here. That's it. Never mind. Nope. I'll, nope. Just, I'll just be quiet. You just cursed him. You just cast a cursed him. Just like that. What did they ever do to you? Feast up with a second. <laughs> Invin down already. This is already looking like a bit of a crumble now for Banshee Esports. We're going to have to back out. And we're going to see one tick gained already with Hota pressing right the way up. You can see Banshee Esports, you can just make out their um, their silhouettes there as they are going to be coming in for a recontest. But it was too little too late and HM and Zaru able to get two kills on the back end of that. That might be uh, a maneuver that Banshee wish they had back because they just weren't quick enough on the recontest. What I was about to say is that Huge really should have an advantage here. Farah uh, obviously working very well when she has the space given to her, not so well when she's taking. But HM just basically mitigated that by getting that pick immediately. But he, it wasn't just all he did that. He also got the barrage online, you know, seventy-four percent, very easy to get online with that burst damage. JPK sticking with the Doomfist here. They're going to stay with this comp on Banshee. Oh, and, oh, oh, a big rock. look at the number of people that helped in that particular kill there. <laughs> that was a big rock and a bigger rocket to finish things off. So with a five v six, we are going to see Banshee now being aggressive coming on the back of that, but huge. Throws in the barrage, taken out by, I believe, the shield there from Hota, throwing that up into the face. But we are going to see Huge rest back into the fight. Dogger with the Coalescence attempting to buy a bit of space, but nobody really backed out of that. And we are going to see that Banshee can afford to start aggressing back in now. So ultimate exchange, but no ground really gained for anybody there. Feast Dog will have the um, Meteor Strike ready to go, as will JPK. <sighs> 
JPK is going to go down. However, it is going to be Banshee winning this fight. Holder uses Flux. Holder used the Gravitic Flux there oh. and got cancelled. So that's oh, great. So it's of Banshee. I also well, you know, it's, it's, it's great for one side. It's unfortunate. It really depends how you want to phrase that. We do have both DPS ults online now. We've got the Meteor Strike and we've got the Barrage online for Banshee. But so much more to play with. Sorry, so much more to play with for Banshee than for um, Fourth Dimension here. But they're going to lose Naru very early in the fight. Fee's Dog's going to take that as an opportunity to get in with the Meteor Strike. Doesn't find a huge amount of value. Now HM looking for angles. Dire down. Is going to be going toe to toe with Huge and is going to come off the worst for wear on that exchange. And this is starting to look like Fourth Dimension very much bottled up just at the start of point B. And I really like this position as well. They're giving up no space whatsoever, making them fight for every single last meter on that payload. And this is great because even if they do end up losing the fight, they're guaranteeing themselves a second or even third fight. Along with the fact that Huge is getting a load of free damage over that choke there, and it's really well set up for this barrage, which he still has. Yeah, there's been absolutely no reason to use it. Um, at this point, everybody else's ultimates have been enough to do it. And honestly, I just feel a little bit like Banshee are, case in point, outplaying it on a player-by-player -player basis. Feastock has managed to get the equalizer there, but Huge oh, coming no. around the back has given away the position with that rocket. They've got to know that that's a barrage coming in around the back. Gets three. Feast Dog is going to get huge, but Crow survived, of course, to bring huge back in. So JPK now has a bit of competition for that play of the game, I think. And both uh, both of them are the DPS players of Banshee Esports, who have been doing a great job of controlling this choke point. But it's, as you say, huge a lot of the time has been coming up better in these uh, far 1v1s. And uh, HM has just not had a chance to really get in position to use that barrage. Uh, of course, it's very difficult to get around this choke because of exactly where Banshee are set up. You can't really go for any wrap around and throw the barrage in. Well, that's oh. going to do it. Found one, but of course, making themselves a static target is going to ensure that Huge was able to find them as well. Feast Dog, very close to a, another Meteor Strike. Dog were able to find Huge here, which is just the equalizer they want. That was the Hulk Fist combo that we were talking about. But now Invin with the Coalescence and Huge with the follow-up. Feast Dog had to get out of the way and they put themselves right in the path of Huge. Naru gets the follow up onto Jamru. JPK looking for a kill onto HM on the back end of that fight. Isn't able to find it. Huge not quite able to get the kill either. Now, two minutes and under. Left on the clock for fourth dimension. We need to see something big because this composition has just not been enough for them so far. And this is basically the fight you want to be taking if you are the side of fourth dimension you have uh the meteor strike you have that gravitic flux you're gonna have the supercharger as well and as long as you can survive this barrage from huge you're not really under too much threat at least for the first part of the well fight. that'll Never do mind. it we saw how to put out that um predictive shield but it was in the wrong place and huge was just able to smash the dreams of fourth dimension taking the slightly different approach and that's going to be a big stagger onto H. Oh, HM actually got out of that. I thought it was going to be a stagger onto them as well. But if you do look at the ultimates now, that was your one chance if you have fourth dimension. Not going to count them out entirely, but look at the ultimate situation now. The opening they had is pretty much gone, as they're going to be fighting into that supercharger as well. But who knows? You know, you could get a very, very good pick here with the Reaper or the Doomfist. Yeah, HM comes into the back. That's the Gravitic Flux out. Enough damage to secure the kill onto Naru. And the Supercharger down as well. There's the Meteor Strike to try and round things out. They lose Jaro in part of that. And that's going to be huge again in the back line. They threw so much at this team fight. And they've got nothing to show for it. And now this is really bad. You have the uh, Supercharger. You have the Coalescence. But how are you going to use that? You know, if, even if you use the Supercharger at the choke, it's going to le be left behind fairly early in the fight. So... You're going to be looking at a very aggressive usage here of these ultimates, and I don't know if they have the time or the space to do that. And Huge is about to get another barrage as oh, well. No. So you've, you've got all these angles to play against. Huge now playing around the clock tower. That's going to be the supercharger out. The compulsive blast to get into range, <laughs> and the barrage to get one. A bit of help there from now to secure the kill onto Jaru as well. The Gravitic Flux coming out just for good measure to force them off the point. That's going to be Feast Dog taken down and... Wow, fourth dimension, well and truly stuffed up at this choke. And that really does come down to the DPS players ste stepping up, you know? We saw JPK having a fantastic round there on doing this at the end. Same going for who, Huge, who, who just seemed to have got, a barrage. Who got this one? Uh, it's going to go JPK. to JPK. Yeah, yeah. But, Very well played. 
both of them did step up. Huge obviously had a fantastic performance on Forest throughout the entire map. And we did end up seeing as well JPK having some great, you know, bursts of uh, or bursts of damage output on that Doomfist as well. Okay, I, I, I don't understand. This tournament was sponsored by Insights, a platform for gamers to learn and teach at the comfort of their own PC. Get your account today. What I wanted to see was the the Holt Meteor Strike combo because it was a juicy ultimate uh, to, to watch. So, I don't know. Blizzard, please let's fix that play of the game algorithm because that, that was not it. Maybe it wasn't it, but it did showcase exactly who we were talking about, who was JPK. Yeah, obviously, we mentioned Huge. We've mentioned Huge a lot throughout that map, but JPK in the back lines was also causing so many problems mm. for the supports. And although, you know, Doggo and, uh, Doggo and Kuma are not exactly inexperienced players, it's <laughs> Doggo still very... particularly. Doggo particularly has been around for a very long time, but both of them, you know, have that experience in their roles. You do still see that. It's going to cause problems, and if your backline can't push in with you, if your backline is having a lot of trouble uh, and isn't able to provide that healing, what's your frontline going to do other than just be a load of alt batteries, really, that can't really go anywhere? It's a very good, very good question, and I was anticipating us being at match point for map number three. So, hmm. um, just to, to for for those of you just tuning in, we haven't actually explained the uh, the the structure, the rule set that we're using. Uh, we're using first to three here, so a little bit like uh, best of five, but we we keep playing until somebody has three points, and that's it. We we call it there. So we're currently at one one. So we are going to see at the very least two more maps as we try and get one of these teams up to three. And who knows? Maybe we'll even see more. Maybe we'll see all five here because fourth I mentioned have to be looking at what happened there with Banshee Esports and trying to reprioritize it because the way they were being shut down by Huge and JPK means that the compositions they were using just weren't enough to get that shut down. But let's see if they can adapt on the fly. Knowing these players as you do, because I know that you're heavily invested in the UK scene in particular, do we think Fourth Dimension have that skill set? I think for certain, especially looking at the you know the staff team behind it, they have a lot of uh, great talents you know working behind the scenes. The players you don't, uh, or the characters you don't see on your screen right now, you know the coaches, the managers, the analysts, and I guarantee the coaches are going to be in the players' ears, just telling them you know maybe even just calm it down more than anything, <laughs> just just calm it down. Don't worry about it. Don't overthink it, uh, and play to your strengths. That's another thing I personally, as a coach, have have said a lot. You know, don't force things too heavily. We mentioned Fiesel going on to more meta favored picks than his own picks. But they've had a lot of success putting him on that McCree, which he is a lot more renowned for than say his Reaper mm. or his Doomfist. So I think especially uh it was apparent when they made the swap from second to third point there, where on second point you can play a lot more McCree. They were getting a lot more value from their comps. Third point uh a bit less so. So Yokai Maybe a couple of months ago, if I'd have seen these particular picks on the left-hand side there, the Banshee, I'd have said, yeah, yeah, guys, I don't believe that. But you're just, you're just trying to get me to talk about a weird pick that's never going to happen in a million years. But this is a strange new world, and we have a Sebastian composition actually out on the field. Do we think this has the potential to work? It's actually been played a fair bit, and I, I imagine they're just going to be looking to maneuver their... Uh... That 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 cannon, I think, is the only way to describe <laughs> it. Uh, this is more of a uh, a non payload oriented pirate ship, if you will. They're going to be looking to probably, if they try to dive it or anything like that, they're just going to simply teleport out of there. They have the turrets up, a lot of damage going into those shields. So, Doggo took a huge oh. amount of damage and wasn't quite able to get out of the way. Stunned by the rock, knocked out of proceedings, and now the rest of Banshee are trapped. Like, they're going into a 5v6, and it is a very poorly favored 5v6. So they're going to have to wait here, and that's fine if your Banshee is... Sorry, I was saying the wrong thing. Fourth Dimension are, are cooped up here. If your Banshee, you can afford just to wait and let them have all of this time, especially when you've got a TP to get around and out of the way of all this incoming damage. There is only one saving grace, and I said it was Doggo that was trapped. Although, never mind. Oh. That's going to be Dyer getting that first kill. Jared down, main tank going down. Fees Dog gets in the back and finds JPK. Crow is still alive. We'll be able to get the res and with the help of that invulnerability field. That is going to be the remainder of Banshee able to stay alive, shrieking into the ears of their opponents that they are not going to be knocked off this point. And again, you know, this shield, uh, this meta, sorry, is so heavily based around the shields. But uh, when you look at the side of, uh, of the Reaper and the Doomfist, it's more walking through the shields. With this composition, they just simply want to burst through it. They want to burn it as quick as possible, give them no time to block anything. It's very strange to me that we're, we're not seeing an adaptation here to something like the um, 
the electric ninja where you you go for the emp dragon blade nano boost combo and just pick apart this bunker we're instead going for a more slow and steady approach of getting in close and looking for picks and that is going to be doggo with the ultimate online able to find crows so this is one for one but crucially um we have lost the main tank jaru is down and we are going to see a rotation now onto point with the immortality field now online for banshee that's going to be oh. huge down the invulnerability field down as well but we've got a bastion with that configuration <laughs> tank form on the field able to find doggo first off and able to get fees dog as well it was looking really really good for fourth dimension but it looks like it might not quite be enough for the hota is able to find narrow jpk now up on the high ground outside of the invulnerability field but we'll have the mercy diving to them to keep them alive here as well and that's the blizzard but the gravitic flux lifts them out of the blizzard slams them back in is going to get the kill on to the um supercharger but that might not be enough crow able to bring jpk back into the field jpk with the reposition now playing on the high ground struggling to find angles as the remainder of uh fourth dimension are playing beneath him but this has been a very very good set of plays <laughs> and we're going to see naru coming back in able to get the gravitic flux off but fees dog with that death boss and finally jpk the following getting dire as well this has been an incredibly scrappy team fight banshee have not wanted to let this go at all they want as much time burnt off this as possible and with another immortality field <laughs> buying a few more seconds crow the last to go fourth dimension finally get that done infant just didn't seem to die he had about four immortality <laughs> fields coming out but the, what opened that entire thing up is that Huge fell off the high ground, so despite losing the main tank, they, it was a 2v1 in terms of picks, and they were able to really capitalize on that in terms of getting position. It took a while, but they did end up taking it, and they now have 3 minutes and 40 seconds to take the second point. And of course, HM is going to be coming up on this blizzard, oh. and with uh, with Diacore out, and Hotter coming around for that reposition to get a bit more damage in, then that might be enough to get this done if they get that blizzard off. But we are going to see Jaru and HM getting a couple of kills there. Now Doggo with the Coalescence and the Freeze coming around as well. Hota not quite able to get the kill there. But the Gravitic Flux now is going to stop them getting onto point. That's going to be Dire down and out on the floor. The Rock failing to connect, but looking for a kill onto the enemy healer. Doesn't quite manage to get it. Invin coming around will eventually receive those Hypospheres to the face. And despite a very good hold, the Snowball coming out from fourth dimension was too good and they have a three minute two second time bank and that's where playing that more point specific composition such as the bastion that comes to bite you uh bite you in the behind where you see they had to make the swaps they can't play that bastion on second point so they just have such an ultimate disadvantage that it just allows uh fourth dimension to just roll onto the point and just start pressing their q keys <laughs> and whichever team presses more q more wins uh, the, the, the sad mathematics of Overwatch is uh, six Q presses are stronger than five Q presses most of the time. Hmm. But outside of that, we did also see, you know, that they, for to mention, actually lost somebody very early on. I believe they were running the Mercy, though, so they were able to res it. But that that delay could well have cost them. And especially if they had canceled that res, they could have, uh, you know, they, there would have been almost no chance to play it back. However, in the end... <laughs> Okay, uh, okay, okay, Banshee. If you're running this, then I'd at least, at least like to shake your hands because I think it's fun. I think the uh, the bouncing Bastion strat of uh, knocking him onto the point to try and do enough damage to get a kill and then backing back out again, if you can make that work, I think is a lot of fun. I'm not sure. It. it hmm. I, I'm intrigued. I mean, they are still in spawn, so I don't know. I don't know why we're talking about because. And this could all change at the drop of a hat. What we're seeing now coming out from fourth dimension looks a lot more likely with that May Reaper composition. I will. Hmm. They're, they're not okay. looking like they're in the spawn part. They look like they're leaving spawn here. So it doesn't look like they're actually okay. going to run this. So well, they're, you know. they're going to be looking to set up this death ball like uh, bunker. Oh, I like this. Up onto oh. the high ground. <laughs> Hasn't got the best ankle though. Isn't quite able to find kills, and there is going to be the May Wall. Has actually just bought space for JK, JPK to reposition. And now all of Banshee just get out of the way. They know that they can afford just to let this happen whilst they burn themselves out. A nice May Wall there interrupts that position from JPK. Are we going to see a second TP to get them out and around behind this so they can take up a position around spawn? Because at the minute, they are just playing 
for shield break. You know, not, not, they're not expecting kills. I feel like they're waiting. There we go. There's the TP. It's a two-stager, but we are going to see the freeze coming out. JPK taking a lot of damage. The immortality field is up. It's a smart play, but so far has not done a lot for them as Feast Dog and Hota, Jaru, Dogu all getting in on the kill feed. JPK gets a parting blow at the end, but we're going to see them very much focused down. However, if Banshee are quick about this, they might be able to get in whilst they still have a numbers advantage. Maybe they did actually take down, uh, I believe it was Doggo and uh, Jaru there. Mm. So a good chance to come in with a numbers advantage, but it was a shame that that would have worked if they hadn't have just teleported straight into the enemy May and got themselves frozen. But it's, a, they, it's unfortunate. They are going to uh, be very close to their, uh, their window here and also the coalescence. So, oh, this is a good positioning. It, it is very good positioning, but they are going to be focused down a little bit. But with the Immortality Field, you don't really need to care too much about that. And uh, at this point, JPK can just afford to sit up here and start to generate this configuration tank form. And I just, I love the coordination here. I love that this is clearly a very well thought out game plan. There's the Gravitic Flux, JPK up into the air, half damage there. HM able to get a kill on the back end of that, and that's going to be Fees Dog up in the face of JPK, who now has the configuration tank form. Dyer gets a kill onto Hota. JPK drops oh. down and gets frozen and isn't quite able to find the kill. Invin able to bail him out on the back end of that as well. This has worked out so well. Such an unusual strategy played so well by Banshee here. It was interesting. You know, Usually you think the Bastion is the main centerpiece of the composition, but whether it was intended or not, it almost seemed like JPK was playing a sort of uh, like a, a, a decoy sort of role there. He, he was taking a lot of the attention and a lot of the healing resources, but he wasn't the one doing the, the majority of the damage. Huge. And the rest of his team were on the ground doing so much damage to the front line of the enemy while they were trying to kill that bastion. That's, uh, that's absolutely right. And now we're going to see a rotation here coming in on the left-hand side. They will have Huge's Barrier. That's a 2,000 HP barrier. That's a great tool to get your Bastion set up and in position. Out it comes. That's three shields for Banshee and a beautiful May Wall coming out from HM. But it's not going to stop JPK getting Feast Dog, getting Jaru. That's the supercharger down. Huge able to find HM as well here. This has been an absolutely massive steamroll here for Banshee. So we're going to see possibly even a better time bank, although the stall is going to start to come out here. We're seeing Jaru swap over onto the Wrecking Ball. Quite a good Wrecking Ball player, but not the sort of Wrecking Ball player that can survive an Amp Matrix Bastion for any length of time. And yeah, this is going to be a very, very close time bank when all this is gone down. But JPK, one more with the configuration <laughs> tank. Managing to get Fees Dog as well. They've managed to just about get half of this captured. And that's going to be the uh, turrets getting Jaru as well. JPK now up on the high ground looking for targets. That's going to be very, very close. It's what, 3 minutes 16 to 3 minutes 2. And I feel like this teleporting Bastion strat is not a thing you can get away with too many times before we see 4th Dimension start to adapt to it. For sure, but I, I will say... I feel like JPK didn't quite like the fact they called him a decoy on first point because second <laughs> point he comes in, three kills straight away. Wasn't a fan of that, so I'll uh, I'll take back what I said there. But <laughs> but for sure, it, it is a very surprise factor oriented uh, strategy, and I feel like they might not even run it on defense. I believe they're in defense first, yeah. So I I can, I can see them running it, but I can also see them maybe trying to throw off. Looks like they're going to be running it, so we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll have to see how this uh, how this works a second time after uh, after the side of fourth dimension have had a chance to you know consider it to debate what they can run to counter it. And from the looks of it, Fees Dog and Kumo, you know, stealing their opposite numbers roles from the from that comp. But of course, if they are going to be running this on the t on attack, the thing that they're lacking, and the big part of why this attack run worked so well for Banshee, is the symmetry with the teleporter. They don't have that mobility, so getting Feast Dog into position to actually be useful on the Bastion is going to be quite difficult for them. And we know that Huge and JPK are very good at working together in this particular setup to take advantage of faults in enemy positioning. So I think this is going to be a tricky one for uh, for Feast Dog here in particular. I feel like their, their goal is not to do it the same way that the, that the side of Banshee were doing it. They just want to simply burn through the shields first. That's all their goal is right now. Well, they are going to be using that wall just to get around the side. Yeah. I think uh, 
they're very shortly going to be running into some Symmetra turrets if they're not careful. There's the immortality field of JPK. TP's out of the way and such a beautiful angle right into that choke. But a lot of that went into the immortality field. Huge is down already, brought back in again by Crow. But now they know that that res is offline. They know that for the next 25 seconds or so, that the, uh, the kills are going to be there to stay. But a big... Uh, TP reposition coming out already from Banshee means that they are now defensively hunkered down on the on the point, and that's going to be the immortality burn now already for Fourth Dimension. Yeah, and th what they're trying to do on the side of Fourth Dimension is just trying to out sustain it. You see the Moira, you see the May, just provides that extra level of shielding here. So once they get in position, it's going to be a much more favored fight for them. But they have to get in position first. That's the important part. They are going to be having this Ant Matrix ready to go now. In fact, that's the Ant Matrix and Doggo with the Coalescence. That's going to be Crow and Huge narrowed down. Fees Dog finally in position to start making this work. As we see HM getting into range to freeze out the enemy Bastion. And it took them a little while. But, you know, sometimes slow and steady does win the race here, guy. And like I say, uh, when you're playing a more sustainable comp, the longer the fight goes on, the much more able you are to you know, keep that fight going, to keep yourself on the up hand. HM is also built up to a blizzard here, so they are going to have a great chance to you know, lock down all of the members of uh, Banshee here, but they are going to be fighting in that configuration tank along with a lot more dangerous ultimates coming on the line, specifically the two amplification ultimates. Uh, and of course, they have Huge's barrier just about ready to go, which is going to protect JPK, make them more or less invincible because it's difficult now for Fourth Dimension to actually close that ground. HM desperately looking for the last few little bits of charge on that Blizzard. Now has it on board, ready to go, but JPK able to get two in very quick succession means that, yes, you may have that Blizzard online, but you do not have a lot of team left to actually do anything with it. Yeah, and... He still has that configuration tank, and now looking at the ultimates, it's a six pack pretty much coming on online for Banshee Esports here. And again, that configuration tank could be very dangerous when combined with the supercharger. You have the amplification matrix from Invin, which just makes JPK a laser beam of death. And then we also have, uh, you know, Crow, who can just keep his entire team alive with that Valkyrie. So it's going to be very tough for them to even get through this choke. Uh, but they, if they can get in position, if they can get set up, they themselves are going to have a lot of these ultimates online that they can use to really edge out this fight. This all depends really on how good this Blizzard is, and we can see HM going for a sneaky rotation. They want to get this in around the back, uncontested. There's the Blizzard, and expertly walls out the teleporter as well. JPK is able to get one, and now Feast Dog in position finds Dire. So that's the shielding right the way down. Hota able to get huge as well. HM, but no. Naru coming in big, finds two of the Gravity Flux. JPK finds two with the configuration tank form. Crow brings Dire back into the fight. And what looked like a one fight there for Fourth Dimension turns into an absolute stonker of a hold for Banshee. We saw it from HM's perspective, but all there was that, like, if he'd have walled off the teleporter first, broken that, made it unable to escape, they would have had a much bigger blizzard. And also, that amplification, uh, sorry, the immortality field was just alive for way too long, and there wasn't enough time to actually execute the targets that were, you know, so vulnerable. But that's nothing to sniff at, you know, capturing first point on 2CP is uh, easier said than done. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, the right sort of comp here, the right sort of hold, absolutely mm -hmm. could see them take this. But 3 minutes and 16 seconds is a long time to hold first. For sure, and uh, you know, this is where maybe you see the defense here pull out that Bastion again. You know, it did actually work very well at, at, uh, when you look at the side of, uh, of a Banshee here. Like I say, they, they need to be winning these fights. Excuse me, a lot quicker than um, than a lot of, like than the side of fourth dimension. So you know they they need to be winning it as soon as pretty much they get in. They need to be teleporting behind, baiting out these resources early. Whereas you know if if you're the side of fourth dimension, you can just sit back, you know, enjoy the ride and uh, <laughs> enjoy the free fire that is a bastion into a choke point. Just try and burn as much time as possible off of that clock. Because if you can get them to the point where they've only got 30 seconds to attack the second point, then that's still a really big, uh, a really big uh, 
result for your team because trying to snowball second point when you have to use ultimates to get the point is going to be very tricky that's the bastion ducking in and out again beautiful wall from hm knew exactly where to put it we're going to wait another few seconds for that tp to come back into place i think see a bit of a reposition no, it looks right like... up into the choke, trying to burn through some shields. May ward up into place. JPK coming face to face with his opposite number now. It looks like they might have a little line through, but that's going to be a lot of shields now given over to Hota as well. May wall out again, forcing the reposition. So yeah, I feel like we're all playing for ult charge here. We, somebody, somebody wants to get an ult and make a push on the back of that. Feast Dog is getting 60% of the way to their own ultimate here, but it's been slow charging for a lot of players except for the supports. Ease dog as well though, he's at 80% right now, but they have on the side of Banshee swapped out a mirror. That's a great wall if they can execute. Well, we're gonna see that they've got wow. the amp matrix as well. Big rock out from Naru, but the immortality field still up from Kumo. And uh, this is gonna be configuration tank form out from the man Feast Dog. Nothing so far, but buys a lot of space. That's the immortality down. And JPK and huge Feast Dog does get one with that. Uh, 1 minute 51 left to go as Dogu secures the kill onto JPK. Ultimate starting to come online now, but we do have the Blizzard left online for HM, which can absolutely shut down this offensive push. And as I mentioned during that fight, they decided to swap to a mirror composition there, so they've actually have, they have the same compositions, the same advantages as disadvantages, but the ultimate uh, situation favors fourth dimension here. So they have a really good situation where they could maybe, you know, win out this map. Well, that's going to be the amplification matrix. Oh. JPK down first. A big freeze onto what is left of Banshee. And we are going to see Dire down as well. Dogger with a melee kill at the end. A full on team kill for fourth dimension just over a minute left to go we do have ultimates for banshee uh sorry we do have a couple of ultimates for both teams in point of fact but getting them in the right position to make stuff happen is going to be very difficult for banshee and this is where the symmetry that we saw you know the last two rounds from uh the side of fourth dimension so good oh that's a great wall and even better pull but nothing is going to come from it it doesn't look like and that's going to be the um fortified down as well and they're going to be walking right more into fees dogs configuration tank they don't have the amp matrix this time but it's still a crazy amount of damage and of course we've got that supercharger and that's going to be a big gravitic flux but most of that coming down into the immortality field jpk oh. gets fees dog that's a big opening because that's a huge amount of your damage done and dusted. Doggo now with the coalescence trying to both keep the team alive and damage the incoming enemy jpk finds hota now Crow finding Jarrow, and this is where this defensive hold falls apart. But we are only going to see 30 seconds left on the clock. So what we may have here is a big old draw, which we'll see us go to at least five maps in this series. However, look at the ults available now for Banshee. If they can get these into position, that could still be a map win for them. But look at look at Kumo. Kumo has that amplification matrix as well. Combined with Feast, like as I mentioned, it's going to put out so much damage and really make it hard four banshees supposed to get in position but if they can they have that blizzard they have the bastion of they even have the supercharger this is really anybody's game as long as they oh, get oh the that's a big wall has managed to circumvent it but coming in with the supercharger jpk now has the configuration tank has them all penned up over in the corner immortality down jpk finds fees dog looking for more can't quite find it just yet fees dog down though is a big blow for fourth dimension jpk able to set up Hota managing to find huge is not going to be enough because Naru and JPK are finding kills here. Gravitic Flux down, brings them up off the point, not enough to secure the kills. Hota finds JPK, but Naru is still up, still firing in those hyperspheres, able to find Feast Dog, able to find Naru. That is going to be one last big attempt at a recontest, but Naru has the Gravitic Flux, able to lift a few people off the point and get that energy in to try and kill the enemy reaper hm not able to survive that and they are going to get off the point we are going to see banshee esports take us to two and one but boy how did they have to work to get that that was a great final fight we said they had to get in position and boy did they do that they were very quick to push fees dog away from the point to push him out of the sight lines he wanted to play and when that amplification matrix did actually come out they were just able to line of sight it, walk away from where, you know, they were in danger and it really let them just live out the ultimate. Just, That's a lot of damage. Just though. look at the mechanical skill involved in pointing straight forward and holding down primary fire.
I have uh, I have seen Bastion referred to as a uh, the world's greatest point and click adventure. Point and click, Bastion's point and click adventure. It's yeah. the classic. Well, this is going to be match point though because Banshee Esports are now two and one in the series. One more to get to that third map win, and that's going to see them move forward and forth. They mentioned relegated into the losers bracket because we are of course running a double elim tournament here. So fourth dimension, even if they lose this next next map, not completely out of the competition just yet. And to be fair, the uh, the winner of this match will, may well be the loser per se, as uh, you know, we see we see the winner of this game does go on to play whoever wins out of Clockwork Vendetta or Nurki Esports. You know, that's that's a tough game no matter who you're playing against, especially if you go up against you know one of the you know, w the winner of last season's open division, a very strong member of Contenders last season as well. So, I think is it really a third overall for Contenders was so was pretty good. Yeah, is it, is it really a prize to be put up against them and forced to fight them, or is is it is it more of a uh, more of a punishment? <laughs> I don't know if punishment's quite the right word for it. Um, I, I think we've not really seen that much of Clockwork Vendetta in the two 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 environment. One of the strengths that they had as a team was the ability to let Monk Mutter flex. So flexing from Anna to Widow to Hanzo in that role. Uh, was incredibly useful for them because you know, if, if they were in the position where nothing was dying, Monk could flex out and go Widow and click heads and miraculously they'd win the team fights. So I actually don't think 2-2-2 lock has done as much for Clockwork Vendetta as people maybe thought it would do. Uh, so going up against them, I think, is not the foregone conclusion that it may have been in the, um, the free-for-all rule set that we had previously. But at the same time, you have got to consider that, uh, that they do also have such, such high-level experience. But True. Anyway, pulling it back to the match that we have in front of us here, you know, it's it's anyone's game in my eyes. It's it's been so close on both maps. You know, we saw it go to, uh, you know, just last fight on, you know, uh, last fight on Temple of Anubis. Excuse me, <laughs> uh, Temple of Anubis just now, but also just Ilios. You know, first point was very close. Second point, as we mentioned, may well have been a uh, an oddity. Mm. Uh, it may well have been. Mm. Uh, especially when you look at how close the... Re in fact, well, exactly the point you were making, I'm trying to restate here, just how close this game has been. Uh, and I think if, even if this goes to 3-1, it's not a score that represents just how close this game has been. We are going to be sure. moving now on to Ilios, which is going to be our payload map, potentially our last map of the series. And uh, a, a map that I think potentially favors bastion strategies payload maps pirate ship uh, strats have always been very strong whether or not we see either of these teams opt to use that here i think remains to be seen but it wouldn't surprise me at this point yeah even even in previous metas we've seen so much bastion here on rialto and as you mentioned on any payload map per se but rialto in particular just seemed to really favor it there was a lot of open sight lines not much natural cover <laughs> at least on first point so uh, it was snipers, or it was it was uh, Bastion here. So, especially Banshee who've opted for it, they might want to run that. But uh, at the same time, we have seen some good counters come out from the side of Fourth Dimension. I, I I think it's I just I just the two to two meta. If you look at some of the things that come out of it, if you were to travel back in past in the past six months and say, "Hey guys, this is going to be meta in six months," you would be laughed off the ladder. Could you imagine a situation in, in this sort of high level tournament play? where Bastion, Farah, Mercy, Baptiste was the play to make. Uh, it's, it's, it's such a weird such a weird turnaround. At the same time, though, people did say the same thing about triple DPS. So Well, true. But we do see both teams opting for that Bastion right now. So uh, both <laughs> far is going to duke it out. Bastion's immortality field. It's going to be quite a slow opening to this Oh, match. well, that's Never an mind. open for you. JPK is going to find HM. We are going to see the res. However, Kumo... A little bit close to falling in the drink there does manage to get out that's going to be another 25 seconds or so by this point before that res is back online not much progress gained on the payload just yet is starting to creep towards this first corner and this is all about shield break immortality field out once again for invin feast dog able to get jpk out of the fight is crow gonna have uh, the ability to get back in and get the res looks like they've just Managed to pull that off. However, in the meantime, it looks like the payload may have rounded the corner. Uh, actually, can't quite see the payload. Has that rounded the corner? No. Yes, it has. Just rounded the corner. So that high ground defensive position, no longer viable for the Bastion, has to reposition and JPK taken out again. So the Bastion strap may be not working out that well. 
Huge and Dyer able to get Kumo and HM out of the fight. And so I may have uh, spoken a little bit too soon there. Huge getting up close and personal right into the face of Hota. Not quite able to find the kill. Narrow will, of course, follow up and get that sorted for us. And we are going to be seeing Huge with the barrage ready to go. There's a lot of ultimates that are going to let them hold this position very strong. We have Invin with that amplification matrix. Huge, of course, with that ever-present barrage. JPK with some fantastic positioning on the high ground. Or he is poking through the shield right now. But Edge 6 not getting too far from that barrage either, which could cause a fair few problems if they can get that immortality field out early. I imagine that they are looking very closely for when that immortality field is down and out. So that's going to be the yeah. immortality down. HM sadly also out of the map for now and able to get Kumo too. This has Huge. been a really good defense, Manchi. Huge has been insane on that forest so far, winning out that jewel almost every time. He seems to have heat seeking rockets, seriously. <laughs> he has hit that forest MSG jewel so much. But Doggo now has the amplification matrix, he's going to put it out as well, and this could really cause <laughs> a hell of a fight. Dueling amplification matrixes. And arguably, Feast Dog not in the best of positions to really take advantage of it because it's so easy for the remainder of uh, Banshee to actually step to the side and just avoid all of that. And Huge, once again, getting the better of HM, <laughs> opens up with the barrage. Feast Dog and Jaru down. This has got to be so frustrating for fourth dimension. With Feast Dog there, I think, I think the idea was actually to allow them to, uh, to just open up some space, you know, force them out of the sight lines. But. All they did was mirror the amplification matrix, and then Ooh. both sides... <laughs> well, wow. HM, okay. HM finally getting huge, and the barrage specifically just to stop that res from coming off. They now know that they've got a huge numbers advantage, and they can afford to start getting a little bit aggressive. But they've only got a minute left on the clock, and there is definitely time for Naru and JPK to make some real good use of these ultimate. But I've been saying this whole time, space is so important. That's why they're pushing up. They're not giving up anything for free here. That's going to be a big uh, flux, though. Yeah, Gravitic Flux, nothing out of that just yet. JPK able to find Feast Dog, thanks to Huge taking out that Immortality Field. And JPK able to just free rain damage into the shields. Will have that configuration tank, able to get Jaru out as well. 30 seconds left to go on the clock, and they're going to be coming into a configuration tank, an amplification oh, matrix, no. and a turbocharger. JPK managing to just help get that kill onto Hota. Out comes Fee's Dog's configuration tank, does get a small amount of speed in that tank form to get back in. They've got just under eight seconds. The big rock coming in, finding Jaru Hota with the swap now over onto the wrecking ball. Out comes the supercharger. Can they get anywhere close to point? They've just managed to get the overtime wick ticking. Beast Dog now has the amplification matrix piling a lot of damage, a lot of that absorbed by Haru with that gravitic, with that kinetic grasp is gonna see Feast Dog taken down by Naru, freshly reinvigorated with the shield. Hota desperately trying to set up a spin cycle, will somehow find huge with that spin cycle, but Crow able to bring them back into the fight straight away. Invin finds Hota. Doggo doing their best to keep this alive. Just too much damage for the Baptiste to survive, and that is gonna be not even one tick gain for fourth dimension and this is where we really start to see you know what these teams have practiced obviously the side of banshee here have been practicing as bastion comp they've been really working on you know the ins and outs of it really understanding how to do it whereas you know the side of fourth dimension have more been playing to the meta more been playing to exactly you know what is strong in this in this current patch and as a result when they're put up against this new threat, when they're put up against the Bastion of JPK and the Far of Huge, they just seem really off. They seem very unprepared against that specific composition. And, you know, it's really allowed the side of Banshee to exploit that throughout this series so far. I, I do feel like repeatedly trying to run HM on the Farah into Huge, when Huge has done such a good job of asserting Farah dominance in this matchup, is a mistake on the side of fourth dimension i'm i'm amazed that there isn't a better attempt made to try and counter it but maybe maybe the problem is that because feast dog is having to play the bastion role hm is not a hit scan dps player they don't have the tool set at their command to actually deal with the farer mm, and it's gonna come that far in specific is so in it's so imperative in these comps especially when you start to get so much damage down uh, that you're building these barrages every fight as huge is doing because it just it's that extra threat it's pretty much a free wipe if you can get in a position to really get value and on attack here if they do not deal with that far quickly 
you can very easily, you know, sneak in behind, as we saw in the Overwatch League with Hydration doing it for the Gladiators. Okay, but I, I really like this idea coming mm. out from the fourth dimension. They want to force <laughs> an early hold and stop JPK getting set up. And now they can kind of play almost out of the way of huge by playing down here with all the shielding at their availability. Are we going to see a swap off the Bastion? Because JPK is going to get stomped the second he sticks that barrel out of spawn because they know that JPK is absolutely the engine of this composition because he's such a big damage threat and oh. huge able to find Kumo around the back. There's no res available for them. They are already in a 5v6. Yes, they're burning time off the point, but it might not be enough. Whoa, huge! Huge already had the barrage! He got two! Yes, Feastock got GP JPK, but it's not enough because Huge is just uncontested in the sky. There is currently nobody on 4th Dimension who can put a stop to Huge just having his way with the entirety of these team fights. Huge has been completely left alone throughout this entire series, as you mentioned, and it's, it's showing right now. He can get so much value from these open sight lines. And <gasps> oh! Oh, just, Doggo just surviving. Doggo so nearly got put in the drink. But look, the payload is already close to rounding that final corner. Huge just seems to be on like a tick a second on yes, getting another. this barrage up. 87% and climbing. Uh, just a little more and they will have another barrage ready to just completely decimate what is left. There's the barrage. There's the supports down. There's the May down and out. Huge, I kind of feel, just put his team on his back and carried that team fight. Good luck, Jarrow. You are walking into a bastion. Your ass configuration tank format. That's going to be it. And that is going to be three and one for Banshee Esports, taking them forward in the winner's brackets. We, we mentioned that we didn't know a lot about Banshee Esports before this match, at least me specifically. I mentioned that uh, simply due to the fact Huge. that you know, they're, they're not really names that are, are so synonymous with Overwatch in the tier 3 scene, but they've definitely come out here and they've had a fantastic show, specifically this man, Huge, who's shown his prowess on this far specifically. Well, Building I, I, I think this is this is oddly symptomatic, yeah, okay, of you and I both being involved with the UK esports scene. And so we look at 4th Dimension and go, oh yeah, Feast Dog, Jaru, Doggo, we know these guys, they're great. Yeah. And we go, yeah, of course, of course, these, these no-names, these no-names in Banshee esports, what can <laughs> they possibly do? And well, quite a lot it turns out so we are going to be seeing banshee esports moving forward to play against whoever is the winner of nairiki versus clockwork vendetta and i have been checking social media whilst this has been going on no word yet on who's won that match so we do have a little bit of a pause while we figure out uh, exactly who we're going to be up against next i've just had word from our producer and i don't know if he's pulling my leg or not Okay, guys, I'm, uh, I'm going to go. Uh, yeah, okay. Apparently, Nairiki won that against CV3-0, which, um, I don't know. I feel like I'm regretting that Clockwork Vendetta tattoo that I got. Uh, wow. So, yeah, okay, 4 Dimension moving forward to play a, apparently, sorry, uh, Banshee Esports moving forward to play an apparently very scary Nairiki Esports. Hmm, uh, Nariki was, of course, very recently uh, announcing that new roster um, that they have put up, uh, but clearly it's a force to be reckoned with, I mean... <laughs> sort I, of speechless I, on the back of that. Yeah, it's it, it's quite hard to follow up uh, news like that, isn't it? But, of course, uh, as of now, I haven't heard a lot about said roster, obviously, uh, recently with Insomnia, and then since that, I have been quite out of touch with the scene, but... So the, I think just just looking very briefly at the Nairiki roster, the only name that really stands out for me is Fupson, who previously played uh, for Crescent Jew in Contenders Trials. Everybody else, I've got to say, is a little bit... Oh, well, Bacon Thief. Bacon Thief, I recognize, previously of Cold Collusion, but it looks like a really unknown roster. So this is going to be interesting to see uh, exactly what these guys did. So I'm looking forward to our next map because it is going to be Nairiki versus Banshee. So two relative unknowns coming up. Uh, in the next round of games. Hmm. And I, so, this just went from you know expecting to have a ACV game under our belts to uh, to you know see a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the favorites that of a uh, of you especially I know, but uh, to you know suddenly being more of a a shock factor game. You know, no one really, at least who I spoke to about this match, really expected Nuriki to even put up a, a, a fight. So to see well, them, that's maybe maybe a little bit unfair, but yeah, they, they certainly were not the favorites coming into this. It, let's let's yeah, put it that yeah, way. Well, We'll be a bit nice about it then, but <laughs> regardless, it's it's definitely an upset. I think I think it's very fair to say it was 
an upset of a result. So, you know, suddenly this has really turned, like, opened up the doors for people to, you know, but maybe maybe this could, you know, some of the more underdog-like teams in the tournament could maybe think, hey, you know, if these guys can beat uh, CV, what can we do with maybe a bit of luck in uh, in map picks, a bit of, a bit of you know, a bit of luck with map RNG, and just in general, just a little bit of extra hard, uh, hard pushing. Well, uh, we will be having a look and seeing exactly how that map is going to go, but we are going to be throwing to a break whilst I learn apparently how to pronounce the name of Nairiki Esports because uh, people are complaining. I apologize. I'm not finished, but rest assured, after this break, I will come back fully prepared to pronounce it properly. Don't go too far, everybody. <laughs> 